original Hail to the Victors theme song. This is a little R and R after the Michigan game, the R and R show. I got Ryan Millard with me, the co host, and I am Ryan Ellsworth. Um yeah, we need new theme music, I think. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? I mean, you can either play that or uh, uh, any other Michigan you know, stadium theme, but it's no, pretty I much going to be on original no matter what. We could do the, uh, you ever watch uh, Michigan Replay? They have, they have some good 70s intro music. <laughs> it's yeah. pretty good. I think it's the same music that they got when uh, Lloyd was hired about 35 years ago. <laughs> I think it's like a... I don't know, it's really 70-ish. I'm surprised they, they actually just updated that set not too long ago. I mean, before it looked like they were doing it in a closet. Right, yeah, it's pretty cheesy, man. I don't I don't know where they're doing it. You know, when they got that backdrop of Michigan Stadium, yeah. I doubt they're anywhere around there. Oh, no, absolutely not. Yeah. I don't know, it's sort of a goony show, but I like watching it because it's somewhat it informative, even though it's all just... Well, that, the uh, main announcer guy, I, for, I forget his name, but he's always doing Michigan radio telecast. Yeah, he does the radio. Yeah, he's so, like, he looks like the big boy to me. <laughs> <laughs> when he smiles and stuff, like, he's always so cheery. <laughs> well, that's, you know, it's funny because, um, like, when that show's on, regardless of Michigan's won or lost, him and Lloyd are smiling from ear to ear. It's like put their, ha- like, their TV faces on. Right. You know, well, uh, kind, of, kind of humorous, even though Lloyd's like, God damn it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they they were saying it was the toughest show they had to do after that Appalachian State game. This is oh, the toughest oh. game we've ever, or yeah, the toughest show we ever had to record, whatever you know. Oh yeah. It's uh, it's uh, Jim Brett was it Brad Spatter? I can't pronounce his last name. No, it's not he, George Blaha. George Blaha, no. <laughs> mm, Kelly Petruka. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know his face. I've seen him a lot. He's, he's a former he's a, player, yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty decent show, but, I mean, it's kind of boring. Yeah. I I the the locker that. interviews are nice, though. I like the locker interviews. Yeah, you don't ever get to see those, really. They never, right. like, they're never, like, in depth with uh, the Michigan players like that unless you watch the replay, so. Right. It's really nice to see. Yeah, uh, I usually, I usually uh, DVR it every week. Just to entertain myself. Well, don't erase those because those are classics. Right. <laughs> it's, it's classic. You know, last year during the when we were just kicking ass, I recorded every game, and then after every game, I mean, I recorded every, all on the DVD. Then after every game, I put it on the Michigan replay. So I have every game from last season, and then the Michigan replay after that. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty nice. So you get in depth. I get, you know, I can remember that forever. My kids will be bored when I try to make them watch it. Yeah, yeah, well, your kids will hate you. Probably. <laughs> anyway, on to bigger and brighter things. Uh, Michigan got another win this weekend. Yes, we did. Maybe not have been the, game. yeah, it might not have been the prettiest one, but win nonetheless against, uh, number 10 Penn State, supposedly ranked number 10. Uh, yeah, definitely a big 10 win. I mean, there's no other conference you can go in where the uh, final score is going to be 14-9. <laughs> so you know it's 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 a good win, but um, Penn State's a tough team and they pulled one out. Yeah, I give every credit in the world to their defense. They're a good defense, no doubt about it. Always do. Linebacker, you, I you know I buy I buy into all that stuff. They've had some great guys come out of there, but man, the offense. You, you know, people complain about the Michigan offense and blandness. I mean, Penn State, I don't know if it's Penn State's offense, but it's pretty bland, or Anthony Morelli, who's just horrible. Yeah, Morelli, I think he's so overrated. I don't think he should be. I don't think he's even rated, really. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who their backup is, but they should pull somebody else in there because Morelli had a lot of guys open, and he blew it. And uh, he's got Deion Butler and Derek Williams. They're like, I mean, they're a couple of the top receivers in the nation. Like, you should be able to get the ball to them, no problem. And they were wide open a lot of times, and he just blew it. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's he's just weird. I don't know. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I could say that. Well, even looking from his picture, he, that man, he does not look like a football player. No. He looked, he looked like he should be studying for the MCAT somewhere. 
<laughs> well, somebody made a comment. I was reading on some board somewhere that uh, he he like was talking trash so Mich- with like Michigan fans like in between like when his defense was on the field. There was people saying that he was like more occupied with like people in the stands than he was like trying to fix you know with the coaches what was going on in offense and all that stuff. So I don't know. Some people were reporting that he was doing that. If so, he I don't know. Some people say he's just a nutball. He's just odd, and he, uh, he, he he's he awful. Away. He's looked awful since he's played. I mean, just he can't. He makes awful throws, awful reads, and he he when you put pressure on him, he collapses like a deck of cards. I mean, he was he was their second option. I mean, Henny was their first option to get a quarterback, but. Right. You know, I would think there'd be somebody a little bit better that would want to go to Penn State. I mean, Penn State's a pretty big school. I think Morelli was pretty highly, highly touted. Um, Henning uh, re- was actually committed and then backed out. Yeah. Came to Michigan. Thank you know, thank God for him. And I think Morelli was still not. I think he was a four star or so, and, and uh, he just hasn't panned out flat out. Yeah. And he I looked bad. If Henny would have went to Penn State, I think he would have had a just as good as a career as he had at Michigan. I mean, Penn State's got a lot of offensive weapons. They, you know, they don't have the running back like Mike Hart, but um, you know, look at uh, look at their tight end, like right. Callis or whatever. I mean, he's a big boy, six five, two twenty. Right. And they have uh, Williams and Butler. You know, they've got some offensive threats, but I don't know. Just just seems like their quarterback couldn't get it done on Saturday. Yeah, that and yeah, the defense played really well. That doesn't help either. They've already slapped Morelli around last year, and they sort of did it again this time. Um, Mar Adams had a hell of a game. Yeah, he was actually Big Ten Player of the Week, I believe. Yeah, so good for him. It. Yeah, he good. had uh, he had a ton of knockdowns. Um, just so many times you could see when he was on the receiver that he'd be right on the receiver's hip as soon as the ball would come. Anybody who's played defensive back knows that you got one hand in their pocket and the other one stripping for the ball. So in case you miss the ball, you can still tackle him. He was doing that all day. So, I mean, that was pretty good heads-up play by him all day. All right. Uh, yeah, he was. Uh, he deflected a lot of passes. I think he had five deflections or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was everywhere. He's a, he's a great guy to have in the secondary. I don't know where we'd be without him on defense. Uh, and it, yeah, he really hadn't had a big game until now. He he really needed that. Right, right. Um, another big name, Brandon Graham's has has had I think five sacks or something like that in two games. Or he's playing out, you know, great lights out. Gives us that Lamar Woodley pressure that we that we lost by losing him. Same with uh, Chris Graham too. He had a hell of a game. Yeah, he had a fumble, one fumble recovery. Right. Um, uh, a lot of people well. gave him a lot of crap last few years too. He didn't play that well last year uh, at times. And he's come up big this year. Same thing with uh, Thompson. He never really got a shot until, obviously, this year's senior year. And he's played well. So, I don't know. I think I think this is a good defense when we're not spread out. I think he's had uh, a fumble recovery in the past two games, once against Notre Dame and once against Penn State here. Yeah, a few interceptions, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, um, Morgan Trent's been- showing up, so. Morgan Trent has shown up. I'm really surprised and uh, happy that he's doing that this year because he was a big question mark in my eyes last year at the end of the season with the uh, Rose Bowl game and everything. He played awful. But I think he, he's done pretty damn well. Um, he's getting to the receivers at the same time the ball is. Yeah, that was so, a problem last year. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, that's the thing. He was a little bit off last year in his timing, but um, this year, you know, he's really – Still getting up there, hitting the receivers as soon as the ball gets there, you know, and kind of discombobulating them, making it harder for them to catch the ball, and uh, he's doing a good job. Let's talk a little bit about the Michigan offense. Let me tell you, Mike Hart, unbelievable what yeah, he can Mike do. Mike Hart, Mike Hart, Mike Hart. It's all you can say. You don't need anybody else. <laughs> I'm kidding, but, I mean, you know, the guy just does everything. Yeah, he's uh, he's been lights out lately. He's... What he's 